I should have said it before you say that. Don't look at your husband, your boyfriend, or your wife, or, and tell them that, because they might think you're trying to tell them something bad. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Acts 5. We'll be in verses 1 through 11. And uh, I, I just ask you to just stay with us. We'll be in the New King James Version. It'll be on the screen. Um, all the scriptures are listed in your bulletin. If you want to take those home and study them, I ask you to take those home and study them. Sister Lori does an awesome job with our bulletin. So please take those home and study it. Uh, uh, write some notes on your bulletin. Go ahead. Uh, we had some young people at one time. They were actually drawing pictures of the, the sermon. So whatever note they had, they drew a picture of it. It was really cool. I took pictures of it when they when they showed it to me. But also, if you missed anything, you can go back on our YouTube channel and watch it. But this morning, we're going to be in Acts 5, verses 1 through 11. It says, But a certain man named Ananias, which suffered his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the product proceeds. His wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the lamb for yourself? While it remained, was it not your, your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. And it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the lamb for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last, and the young men came in and found her dead and carried her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Welcome to church. Amen. <laughs> We're in our week two of our series, Mask, and last week we looked at Genesis, and, and God showed us that we were created in this world without masks. That we were created, as the Bible says, naked and not ashamed. We wasn't ashamed of anything. As a matter of fact, we walked around and, and we walked with God in, in, in the cool of the day. And we were with Him. And it was amazing how we could be so pure and not even realize it. But then we made a mistake. Amen. We ate of the one fruit that we weren't supposed to eat of. And because of that... We, we begin to have shame, and when we get shame in our life, we begin to cover up, cover up our identity in Christ. But I want to let you know, church, when you're wearing without a mask, your life will be so much better. Your life will be so much better. And this morning, as I begin to read the scripture, God began to do something in my heart and begin to show me some things about this mask and the reasons why we wear masks. You see, we hide because the enemy has convinced us who we are not. I told you last week, and I don't mind telling you this again. The world doesn't have a sin problem. It has an identity problem. You don't know who you are. Amen. Well, I know who I am. I'm Bobby. Amen. I'm Bobby Winburn. Amen. I'm about, uh, about a, when I want to have a good day and when I'm standing Tristan and Travis, I want to be about 6'3", uh, and, and, and about uh, 125 pounds, amen. Some of y'all laugh, but that's what we do. When we're around certain people, we hide our identity, and we don't actually live the identity that God has called us to be. And the problem is, we get to the point where our mask becomes our life. It becomes our identity. We are hiding and impersonating so much that we become what we think we are and we separate ourselves with God. We try to hide ourselves with fig leaves and listen, God, uh, listen, church, God looks at the heart, not at the identity that you think you have. <laughs> Some of us young people, you need to hear that because I want to let you know this. You are a child of God. 
the leg. Amen. I'll step in a way to rule as long as my leg comes up there. Amen. <laughs> Some of you say, well, I got a good friend. Good friend that'll do this. Trust me, most of the time those good friends, when you're in trouble, they're gone. <laughs> Amen. They, they out of there. Well, my husband, he loves, I know my wife, she tells, she tells you all this. My husband will step in front of a bullet for me, amen. I wheel with my arm. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of vegetables in there. No, I, I, what I'm trying to say is this. Not many people will die for you, amen. But our God sent his son to die for you. Not just to die for you. He left perfection to come to a world that was broken and had every emotion that a human would have. He felt the pain. He had the suffering. He felt sadness. He felt, we talked about it, how he was pressed and, and, and pushed down to the point that he was sweating blood. But he still loved you enough to say, not my will, but your will be done. He still loved you enough to go on a cry, cross and his blood be shed for you. He still loved you enough to say, it is finished. Some of y'all need to tell Satan that real quick. It is finished, amen. You ain't got Control. I know I'm country, so we use those country words, amen. You ain't got no control over me, praise God. I, my God, my Father died on the cross so I can be free, free indeed. And some of us need to look at the devil and say, devil, get off my back, amen. Because it is finished. It's finished. I used to love Mike Tyson punch out on Nintendo. And it was so funny because you'd be battling those guys and you'd be fighting them and, and you'd be hitting them and they would fall down and they'd make this little noise, woo, and they'd fall down and you'd be like, I got them. And the referee would go, one, two, this little bit referee over there. You'd be counting, you get so excited. Sometimes you put the controller down and you know what happened? You'd be so excited when he stands up. You know what? When they just when they don't make the uh, noise, you know what? They down. They down for the count. They ain't getting back up, baby. The devil is down for the count. He ain't getting back up. He is not getting back. Church, I, I want you to understand that this morning because there's not a lot of churches that are going to tell you this. Listen, I'm telling you this. God has already defeated sin. Yes. Now you haven't. The problem is you're trying to defeat it. You can't defeat it. Only our God can. He's already defeated. You just got to trust in him and rely on him, and he'll do that. But we have this mask on our face. You see, there's two purposes of wearing a mask. The first one is to change your identity. The second one is to hide your identity. Some of us want to change who we are. Y'all know when y'all was in school, you didn't want your name anymore. Amen. You wanted to change it. Man, when I was coming up, that was during Saved by the Bell. <laughs> I always wanted to be Zach Morris. I didn't want to be A.C. Slater. He had too many muscles. And I, was, I wanted to be the cool guy that always got in trouble. Amen. I wanted to be that guy. So I, I would, and sometimes when I was by myself, I'd look in the mirror and say, you looking good, Zach. Because I wanted to change who I was. I wanted to hide my identity because I thought I wasn't good enough. There's people running around this world that don't think they're good enough. So they're hiding their identity or trying to change it with a mask. As I come to find out, most people don't want others to see the real them. So they hide themselves or change their identity so they can blend in. And guess what? The mask you were or you wear are not remotely close to the ones who God called you to be. As our text shows us, you see Ananias and his wife were wearing masks. They wanted everyone to see what they had did. They, but Peter saw through their masks. So I want to ask you this morning, what masks are you wearing? I brought this out last week. Amen. And I love it. You'll notice it's got some writing on it. Amen. You don't want to put this on because there's a lot of sweat in it. Amen. But I'll tell you this. We go through life so much wearing a mask. A mask that looks like we got a, just a happy identity. We're fine. We're good. Y'all know those people I'm talking about. When you look at them and you see what's going on in their soul, but they'll tell you they're okay. They put on a face. They say, I'm perfect. I'm good. I'm perfect. You know, I'm good. I'm good. I'm perfect. I'm 
been, I'm mature, right? Y'all know those people, I'm mature. Those people that are just toys and all happy and all great, I got everything together. They do these things and wear these masks and they walk around this world and the bad part about it is they're in church. And they're raising their hands, but they don't have a real relationship with the king. Well, I'm saved. Look, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. I'm saved. I raised my hand and he made me glad. Amen? The pastor told me to smile, so I better smile. Amen? He'll think there's something wrong in my life. Let's put a mask on. Listen, church, it's okay to be broken. It's okay to need help. It's okay to let people see the real you. <coughs> Some people say that I'm too open sometimes. I told you about my, <coughs> my state of depression. I told you about how me and my wife went through some hard times this year. I told you about many things. You ask, I'll tell you. But the point I'm trying to make is, church, we've got too many people that think they're holier than now, and they're walking around this earth, and people think they have to live up to that standard. But church, you don't have to live up to any person's standard, amen. we got a God that picks you up even when you're not in the right standard, even when you're in the dirt, amen. The woman that they take with adultery, they want to cast her out, throw stones at her. And Jesus got down and dirty and wrote in the dirt. I don't know what he wrote, but I think he was showing everybody, I don't mind getting a little dirty to save somebody, amen. I don't mind standing in the way of a couple of stones, amen, because I realize those without sin cast the first stone and nobody threw a stone, amen. Jesus could have picked one up and threw it at her because he had no sin, but he loves you enough not to know not to play a part, to know that he's living for God, to love you even when you don't make the standards, amen. So take off your mask and come to Jesus, come to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Great I Am, the One Why we wear a mask. Go ahead and go to the next slide, Brother John. Go ahead and go one more. There you go. The first reason why we wear a mask is to look perfect. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Those people that look like they're just, nothing's going wrong in their life. Have you ever just looked at somebody and said, man, I wish I had their life? Hey, Amen. Oh, I wish God, they just look so happy. They just walk around with a smile on their face all the time. So you know what we do? We try to make it look like we're perfect. I couldn't find this out. We spend more time in a physical mirror, mirror than we do in a spiritual mirror. I used to, we used to have some young people here. We had a mirror back there in the back. I don't think it's there anymore, and I'm glad it's not. Because every time those young people went in, they'd go, <laughs> <laughs> they spend more time looking at the mirror than they did in the Bible, amen. And I say that funny, but I say this: so many of you worried about what people see on the outside, they don't. You don't care what they see on the inside. Ananias and his wife, you know what they did? They brought up some money because they said, hey, if we bring this money to the chapel, people will think we're saved, amen. People will think, hey, we're going to bring it all. We sold this land, we're going to bring it all. We're going to put it at his feet. So they came to the altar and, and they laid it at the feet. But Peter seen right through their mask. And they said they gave it all, but they had put some back. They put some that, you know what, church? There's some of you that don't, now I'm not talking about your money, but you're saying you're giving your whole life over to God, but you're putting some back in the bank, amen? You're putting some over there because you truly don't trust God with everything you have. You don't trust Him with your depression. You don't trust Him with your financial issues. You don't trust Him with your guilt. You don't trust Him with this or that. So you put it in the bank and you come and say, God, I give you everything, but God sees through that, church. He sees that you you're not perfect. He sees that you make mistakes. He sees that there's things that are in your closet. But church, it's time that we open up and say, God, you go through my closet, amen. You go through those things I'm not perfect at. You go through those things that I've messed up on. And church, when he does that, he'll change your life forever. And these guys went up there and they put money down. And, 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 and he says, listen, he died. Could you imagine that? You put your offer in and you just fell over? I know. I heard you glad we didn't take an offer earlier. <laughs> put it in the plate. Boom, he fell over. They took him and I love it. They got guys like Tristan and Johnny and them. Homeboy just said bury him and they picked him up, took him out back, and put him in the ground. They said the church began. 
I fear God. It says, listen, I don't want to die spiritually. Some of you are so scared about a physical death, I'd be more worried about a spiritual death. Right. The number one uh, thing that people are afraid of in this world is a physical death. Of dying. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all been there. Were you scared? And, uh, you scared that you're not going to make it much longer? You can, you can try to get everything in order? Listen, church, I'd be more worried about you dying away from God. I would be more worried about you not knowing the Savior, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I'd be more worried about that. Church, you're not going to be perfect. Stop putting on a mask and acting like you're perfect. Christians all across America still have this strange idea that when we walk through the door on Sunday morning, we better have it all together. Your hair better be right. Your, your clothes better be presentable. Your kids better not make a peek. You better have a smile on your face. And for goodness sakes, you better not come forward at an invitation time because then people will just talk about you. But church, I love what this book says. It's called Spir A Messy Spirituality. It says this, for a period of time, we're lucky to have a housekeeper and she would keep it clean once a week. But they found out they dreaded the day that she came because that whole morning they would clean their house before she walked in their house. Some of y'all trying to clean up before you walk into church. You spend so much time trying to clean up, make yourself look good, that you don't even want to walk to the altar and give it to God. Church, we are not perfect. Stop worrying what other people think about you. There's been many, many times that I've had to come and lay down at the altar and understand that I am not perfect. Listen, the Bible says that we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says if you look in the mirror and you tell yourself that you do not sin, it is telling yourself a lie. In church, there's too many of us that you consider ourselves so holy, so spiritual. We shout the glory, but there's sin in our life, and we have laid it at the feet of Jesus. And church, I want to let you know, if you are that way, if you have not laid that sin down, then the Bible says if you don't know Jesus Christ, and if you don't know Jesus Christ, when you come to the gates, he'll say, depart for me. I never knew you. And he'll send you to a place called hell. A place of fire. A place of suffering. A place of misery. And a place that you'll spend the rest of the eternity in. And church, there are too many people that are trying to just go half-hearted through the motions and they don't understand that they're not perfect. We gotta lay it down. Which leads us to the second thing. Go to the second one. We wanna look like we got it all together. Amen. Now, if you come here at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings, my two-year-old runs around like a crazy person. He'll go back there and he'll get his little, little car and he'll be riding it down this little aisle right here. And I know this is a holy place. And I try to tell him, oh, Moses, he brought rocks to church this morning. Just rocks, amen. He was excited. He wanted to show Papa and Mama. He had a bag of rocks and he bringing it to church this morning. He, was, he had a milk in one hand and rocks in the other hand. He was ready to go. And he's running around and some people say, well, Bobby, you need to get your child straight. You need to get that there. You know what? I'm tired of hiding it because, listen, I understand that I don't have it all together. My kids are just as bad as yours. <laughs> and if you think if your kids is worse, you will get a big old body. Your kids is worse. No, your kids are pretty bad too. <laughs> you don't have it all together. I know this morning you woke up and somebody didn't turn the dryer on and your pants was wet and you wanted to yell at your husband and your wife. I know you woke up this morning and the toaster didn't work so your pot tart was burned. <laughs> I know this morning you woke up, you were trying to make instant grits and you didn't know you had any yield. Y'all get that later. <laughs> Listen, you don't have it all together. And the great thing about it is, God, you don't have to have it all together to come to Jesus. Right. Peter denied him three times and still came back to him. David committed adultery and murder, had somebody killed, and still was a man after God's own heart. Noah got drunk. Moses didn't obey. Adam messed up. We can go down the line of all these great people we think that have faith. And listen, the biggest thing about it, they didn't have it together. And church, there are too many people trying to play a part, acting like they got the perfect family, the perfect life, the perfect financial system, the perfect this. There are so many people that are so in debt just so people think they have it together. Well, I got to go buy a new car every three years because if I don't, they don't think I got money for 
I know I got laid off two years ago, but I better act like I'm going to work. So let me put on some scrubs. Let me put on this and act like I'm going to work for a couple of days. Because we don't want people to see the real us. But God says, come to the altar just like you are. You don't have it together. Which leads us to the third thing. Go ahead, Brother John. You'll go to the third thing. I think he's out there doing something else. <laughs> the third thing about this is this. Listen, we've got to stop trying to be everybody else. We've got to stop trying to be everybody else. There's so many times that we put on a mask to be somebody else in our life. Amen. I love this because when I became pastor here, you know who I thought I was going to be like? Brother James. Brother James has been here seven years before I was. And I know some of y'all looking around because y'all know he ain't no Brother James. <laughs> Go ahead. I thought I could be just like him. He's a deep, he's a deep preacher, man. I got deep sometimes. I'll be studying so deep, I got stuff. I couldn't even come to you and bring you a message because I didn't know what I was talking about, amen. I just wanted to be deep. I used big words I couldn't even say. You know what the problem is? A lot of us trying to be Joel Osteen. Some of us trying to be Stephen Burdick. Some of us trying to be Perry Noble. Some of us trying to be, uh, hey, listen, you saying, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not trying. Well, you trying to be Beyonce. <laughs> well, I see what you be wearing. Single lady. Some of y'all trying to be uh, uh, some kind of football star. Some of you are trying to be some kind of athlete. Some of you are trying to be this and that. Church, God made you unique. Be yourself. Amen. Be yourself, church, because I'm tired of running around trying to see a bunch of mini bees. I told somebody this before when I was a youth minister. They said, Bobby, I want to be like you when I grow up. You know what I told them? I want you to be better than me. Because I got issues. I got problems. Stop trying to be like everybody else. And the nice thing, if you look, if you go back and ask, the reason why they did what they did is because they saw somebody else do it. When they did it, those people actually gave everything that they had. They laid it at the feet. They, they sold some land and gave it to them and laid everything that they possibly got on that land. They laid it at the feet of the disciples. And you know what? They got praised for it. They got blessed for it. And some of us say, well, if I just do what they did. And somebody will give me a title. Somebody will give me a pat on the back. And I know there's some people in here who say, I don't care what other people think. Is that the reason why you got the haircut like everybody else has got it? Amen. Is that the reason why you won't let them in your house when they stop by and knock on your door? Because you know, sometimes the house is dirty. Amen. You come to my house. Amen. Paw Patrol is laying around everywhere. It's like a minefield of Paw Patrol. <laughs> Marshall Chase, all of them. Rocky Zumba. I think we even got the Everest. They just laying around. Amen. You walk through there, you step on them, you know. Listen, my house is a mess. You know what? A lot of times what we want to do is clean up the outside. Amen. As long as we keep the grass cut, keep the bushes trimmed. Amen. Make sure there ain't no mail that's been in the mailbox for about three years. Amen. As long as it looks good, and we'll meet them at the door. We'll talk to them outside. You know what? We do the same thing to God. God is banging on the door. Amen. He's banging on the door. You know what we do? We open the door and we slide out. Hey, Jesus, look, I'm looking good. Look at the hedges. Look, look at how I'm dressed. Look, at, I paid my tithes. I paid my offering. Amen. I came to church last week. I was here. And you know what's on the inside? There's cockroaches and there's, there's stuff crawling around and you don't even want to know about it. Amen. Same way with us. We have so much sin inside of us, but we dress it up on the outside and God's knocking at the door and he wants to come in and clean up your mess. You don't have to pay him anything. You don't have to do nothing. Stop trying to look like the rest of the people in the world and let him in when you're broken. Amen. Amen. Let him in. We see this to the last one. We want to look like we're finished. We want to look like we're finished. Have you ever bought something and it wasn't completely finished yet? Have you ever bought something and you just couldn't finish it right now? And then you bought you bought a house, you bought a you you, you, you bought a, a car, and, and 
Listen, I know, man, I, I've bought a car before, and you had to use thumbtacks, you know what I'm talking about, to keep the, the thing from falling on your head. You know what I'm talking about, right? You're driving down the road, you have the windows down, and the yellow stuff flow in your face, and you start coughing this thing. So you take thumb tracks, you put it up, and you get so ashamed of it. You're like, if I just had the money to fix that, so nobody would see it, amen. When somebody says, can you drive me somewhere? Well, not really. Let me drive with you, amen. And my car's not there. Because you don't want nobody to see that. You know what's the problem with that is? God is the one that's going to finish you. There's a song we used to sing when I was a little kid. Some of you. It says, he's still working on me. Make me what I want to be. Listen, I want you to hear this, church. He's still working on you. Amen. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth, the Jupiter and Mars. But church, he is still working on me. Some of us think we're so mature and we got it all. I know, I say this about every week. Some of us think we've been saved for so long, man, we just already in, in heaven. We already flown away. We can't even sing, I fly away. We say, I flown away. <laughs> Not one glad morning, I'm already there that morning. Because we think, we, man, we, we shouted. We spoke in tongues in 1985, but hey, we did it. You know what the problem is that? You're walking around like this. Unfinished, but you think you're finished. Church, there's many of us that's walking around with a mask that says we're perfect, we're finished, we're toys. Many of us are walking around saying we got it all together, that we got this and got that. And you know what's going to happen? It's going to come a day where it don't matter anymore. What everybody else thought about you. I mean, if I act a certain way, the church won't like me. They won't accept me. Restoration Chapel, if we become a church that we're not going to accept everybody, then it's time for me to leave. Amen. 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 Right. I'm, I'm just saying, and I, I don't mind saying that to make my wife probably look at me like, oh Lord. But if we become a church that we can't accept the poor, the broken, the sick, the lame, the prostitute, the drug dealer, the murderer, the gossiper, the liar, the partier, the young, the old, the white, the black, the Hispanic, the Asian. If we can't, ex if we can't accept them when they walk through the door, then church is time for me to leave because church is not here to be a social club. Right. Amen. It's not how well you dress; it's how your heart is. Yes. It's not how well you look. I look good in this mask, Amen. I look good without the mask, Amen. But I look better. Some of you like, I just leave it on. <laughs> but I, I'm just telling you this. There's so many people that would rather have fake people in their church instead of have real people with real problems. Amen. Amen. Well, we're scared because we see what the news says. There was a shooting here, and there was this there, and that was that there. You know what, church? If we're, we're ready for God to be with us, amen. So that means God will provide. God will be there. We lean and trust on God. Proverbs says, trust on him. Be with him. And church, we need to trust on him. And if it's our time to go, it's our time to go, praise God. But as long as we love those that walk in the door and tell them the gospel, tell them how great God is, tell them. Listen, church, and it's not about just who comes in this church. When you walk outside this church, take off your mask. People want to see real people. why most people don't come to church, the reason why people don't like Christians is because we wear a mask too much. We don't show people we got problems. We got issues. I want to let you know this and me and my wife sometimes are. Amen. I know I'm the pastor. We're not supposed to argue. We sometimes argue. Sometimes she don't like the things I do. My children sometimes get in trouble at school. My two-year-olds already been suspended from daycare twice. <laughs> Before he turned two. <laughs> There's times that we have to pray and hope God gives us some money to help pay the bills. There's times where I'm praying because the gas hand is really close to that E word. And I'm just 
pray and we got another day to make it. There's times that we have to eat grilled cheeses. There's times when we get upset. There's times that we cry, we get sad. In church, anybody that tells you anything different, they're wearing a mask. The great thing about our God is he wants masked people to throw down their mask and be real with him. He wants you to come and lay your things that you're trying to hide. He wants you to lay them at the altar, at the place of sacrifice. And he understands that there's going to be times that that mask is going to jump back up in front of you and you want to go back to it. There's going to be times that you're hurt. There's, listen, I know church, and, and, I'll, and I'll go ahead and say this. I don't know why God's telling me this, but if you come to this church before and we've hurt you in any other way, I apologize, but we're human. We make mistakes. We fall. If somebody didn't shake your hand this morning and you're mad at them, don't be mad at them. They're human. You didn't see that they had a two-year-old running around behind them and told them they got the nursery. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is this, church. God wants imperfect people so he can do something in their life. If you look at everybody in the Bible, you'll notice that most the most common trait they had is they wasn't perfect. Elijah had issues. David had issues. Adam had issues. Peter had issues. Thomas even doubted him. To the point that they even called doubting Thomas. Isn't that just hard? But you know what? Our God says, hey, you can doubt, but I'll show you the scar. You just come to me. You just come to me. Church, we've got to come to Jesus. As my wife comes to the piano. I'm here to tell you this morning, stop wearing masks. Stop wearing masks. Now, how do you take this mask off? First thing you got to do is you got to break down. And you got to be able to lay it at the feet of Jesus. Young people, you're going to be labeled your whole life. Mm -hmm. Most of y'all are part of the Generation Z. If you didn't know that, that's pretty cool. At least you're not a millennial, because that's what I make up. <coughs> but you know what? You'll be labeled your whole life, just like the baby boomers was, just like Generation X was. They were always labeled. They were always told, you're going to be this certain way. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Some of y'all grew up in the 70s, and all you're called is hippie. <laughs> Amen. Some of you were growing up in other eras and you was called this and you was called that. You're always going to be labeled. But our God wants to label you for gifts. The only way you can do that is take off your mask and lay it down. There's a song my wife's working on it. And one day I hope she'll sing it. It's called Divine Exchange. The Bible says, uh, the song says this, and the Bible says it too. He took my place. I want you, I want you to hear that. I'm going to get this out to you. I just told this. He took my place in a divine exchange. He said, you lay your mask down and I will jump in there and take your place, church. I will take your, all that sin, all that shame, all that so I feel shameful for it. I'm not perfect. I feel bad about it. I, 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 I'm not. I, I'm not finished. So I feel bad about it. So if I just dress a certain way, look a certain way, act a certain way, I think I got it all together. But my God says, yeah, you don't have it all together. Just come to me because I've made a divine exchange for you already. I paid the price so you don't have to. <laughs> Last night we were at the singing last night. We went across the street for the hot dog sale. And my wife thinks it's for me to go go to go pay. And somebody had paid for this. And they were like, really? Why don't you do that? No, don't pay for mine. But they still ate. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the thing is, God 
God's already paid for it. But some of you don't want to eat. God's already paid for it. Think about it. We went to lunch today. And somebody said, oh, I got yours. I got yours. You know what? Most of you say, okay, I'm going to eat. Amen. No, you shouldn't do that. I can't believe you did that. You know I paid for it. But you can just eat. But when I tell you this, that God died so you could have everlasting life, all you have to do is live for him. Most of us say, I don't want it. Say, God, forgive me, save me, change me. God, I, I believe that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Listen, I told this last night, and I don't mind saying it because God's really dealt with me in this. We tell people all the time, all you got to do is ask for forgiveness of sin. And that's true. you got to ask for forgiveness. But after you ask for forgiveness, you better believe in who you ask for forgiveness for. Because a lot of us want to go and say, hey, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But we leave and never change. But when you believe in the love that God has, Every time you put the mask on, say, listen, don't wear that mask. I know you're in 